Welcome to the Gospel Attic Podcast. I'm Greg Bryan. And I'm Jim Resty. We're gospel addicts because we believe the gospel of Jesus isn't just good news, it's the best news ever. We're addicted to the gospel because it doesn't just start us out in the Christian life, it is the Christian life. Join us as we look at the Bible through the lens of the gospel. Thanks so much for listening. So, Anthony, what uh, what about you? What stood out to you? Oh, my gosh. So much. So many highlights. I uh, really loved being over there with the group. Um, first of all, it has to be said that the, the group, we were a group of 10, and we gelled immediately. Everybody got along. It was very, it was just a very encouraging group to, to travel with. And we had a lot of it. fun. We had a lot of we fun. We had a lot of fun. <laughs> we had a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. And uh, yeah, nobody, you know, nobody was, nobody was difficult. Um, it, right. it was, a, it was a great group. It was, you couldn't, you couldn't really wish for a better group of people right. traveling together. You know, when people think about taking a trip like this, they often, the seriousness of it, of, which it is, of course, a, the serious learning opportunity. And um, there's a, there's a lot of things to learn and to see and to, to take in. But uh, I, I don't think people realize how fun it is <laughs> to, to, to travel and to, to be there and, to um just to to be in europe and you know a lot of great conversations with shop owners and and people sitting at coffee shops and just the opportunity to just really soak in the culture was the modern culture was was fantastic and man i i echo a lot of what randy said i was really just overall just in awe of everything that Paul was up against in his mission. And you just think of <laughs> all the setbacks that he had, all the challenges. And it, it was really inspirational for me to think about like, how often do, do I just give up or what's my point? What's my breaking point? And here, Paul, he, he didn't seem to have one. He just <laughs> He just kept going regardless of getting arrested and, and beaten and all the setbacks. And just I was just in awe that he just kept on going and never lost that zeal of for gratitude of what of what Christ had done in his life. And it was just, it was just amazing. Yeah, it makes so, me think of what he wrote in Corinthians uh, for the love of Christ compels us. Because we're convinced yeah. that one died for all, therefore all died. That he who, uh, um, and he who died for all died. That those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for him. I mean, the Apostle Paul is a classic example of of uh, somebody who was gripped by the grace of God. Um, he he was a changed man. He was a changed man. Yeah. Yes. You know, in, in doing some reading prior to the trip, I, I really, I just, it really hit me how evil he was prior to his conversion, prior to having that um, encounter and having that transformation. I mean, he was an evil person. You could compare him to any modern day terrorist he yeah just, he wanted to put Christians to death. I mean, he that was, was it. He, he was he was a uh, on a mission to to uh, to put Christians to death until he experienced a divine revelation from of God in Acts chapter nine, and that forever changed his life. You know, um, yeah, it's it's really really a powerful testimony and and i love how in the when he in his writings he calls himself the chief of sinners like <laughs> so he knew he knew he knew, he knew how bad he knew he knew how, how bad he was, was. Yeah. yeah and um, to have such a dramatic transformation he never lost sight of that yeah and that and that to me is so inspirational to think back of all the ways that that i feel like God has worked in my life and to never forget, you know, in those seasons when we're just not feeling it, when we're burnt out, tired, wondering where God is in all in anything 
to just remember all those things that that God has done and just to to be reinvigorated by by the truth of what we know in our hearts is just uh, I'll I'll never forget feeling that in when we were in Greece just that reminder was so powerful yeah amen to that um so for our listeners basically our trip was if you just turned in your bibles to acts chapter 16 and you read Acts chapter 16 to Acts chapter 18, you would read exactly the trip we followed. Um, I mean, yeah, we started, we actually saw the port Neapolis where Paul first came into Greece. And then he worked his way, which is just a couple of miles, I think, to Philippi, where he met Lydia. And then he went to the town of Philippi where he got arrested. Anyway, it's just, it's, it was so cool we really did walk in his footsteps <laughs> and yet um unlike unlike when you go to the holy land when you go to the holy land i love the holy land um tremendously they don't in the holy land they they tend to build churches on on top of all these special places um and so it's really difficult to tell what it was like um for them at that time and that that's what was cool like the city of philippi the city of corinth they didn't have that i mean they had you know buildings on the side and museums on the side and stuff like that but pretty much they left it you know untouched and so you could kind of get a feel for what it was like to live in those places and how big the cities were and so that was that was cool um yeah Certainly, I, one of the highlights for me was when we rolled into Kalambaka and just this beautiful town that is surrounded by these rock formations that you just wouldn't believe. I would compare them to rock formations that you would see like driving uh, either through Wyoming or Colorado or Utah. And they just surrounded this this little town and... We had the opportunity just walking around the town itself was great. That was fun. And I know we, we had, (laughs) it was just really cool to, to see the town. And there was one point where we stopped and somebody said, we're, we're walking, we're walking in Greece right now. We are in Greece, right? We're walking in a little European town and, and everybody just celebrated that. But then having the opportunity to go up to what they call Meteora, and seeing the monasteries that are built on the very top of these rock formations that just tower over this town. And the views from there were just absolutely stunning. Incredible. And, and, and you I know the picture you, when you show your, your friends the pictures, they do not they don't do it justice at all. Because absolutely nothing. Yeah. It's just to be there. And I know a lot of us were just in awe of, of how they managed to build these ornate, intricate monasteries on the top of these towering rocks. It's just unbelievable. So I was, I was so grateful just to, I think part of it was I, I coming into the trip, I just did not expect to see a place like that. Like it just blew my mind that yeah, this town is in the center of the, these, these beautiful mountainous rock formations. And then to have the opportunity to, to drive, but <laughs> to ride in the bus think, you know, we had such a skilled and diligent bus driver. He just managed these, those roads so well, which I know makes a huge difference on a trip like this, but to go up there and have the opportunity just to, to take in the views and to learn about the history of the monasteries and, and how well maintained they are and how people are dedicating their lives to, to pass it on to the next generation. I mean, it was just, and I feel like in, in talking with some of the, the shop owners that it's often a place that gets overlooked because it's not a big city like Athens or even Thessaloniki. And it's not certainly not one of the Greek islands. But if anybody's listening and you're planning a trip to Greece or hope to go to Greece someday, please, please make a stop in, in Kalambaka and, and visit what they call the Meteora which I think is a, an extremely cool name. <laughs> yeah. And re- and really it's a very fitting name because you you almost feel like you're on another planet. I mean, it's just and I know, you know, 
several films have been made even a couple james bond movies have have used it as a backdrop and and you can certainly appreciate why absolutely um yeah that um when i saw that when we first came across came you know drove and saw that it reminded me of the garden of the gods in colorado springs although oh, yeah although i will tell you it's probably 10 times better than the garden of the gods oh the gods is amazing but then there's 24 monasteries that were constructed on the the tops of these gigantic pillars of rock like the garden of the gods and some of them were like impossible to get to um <laughs> you, you don't know how these monks um got you know actually got there and how they got food and stuff like that it, it was that, it was that has the cable the cable car that goes yeah one has it. the cable car i think that was in the james <laughs> bond movie the, okay. that was that was the one that was in the and i think they actually used that cable cable thing oh in yeah the james bond movie yeah i have to watch that again that was the uh which which james bond was it um it oh gosh um uh, something your eyes um for your eyes only for your eyes only yes for your eyes you. only yeah so one of these monasteries is in that movie and when you see the scene you'll know exactly that that's what we're talking about that was yeah that was amazing so not only did we do the biblical apostle you know apostle paul's footsteps but we we stopped and and got to see these monasteries we also stopped to um same town we stopped at this uh um what was it a uh the tombs the tombs of king philip the second oh, yes. and uh oh my gosh alexander the fourth which is the son of alexander the great that was something that wasn't it was. that was and and that was another place on the trip where i was just deeply touched because of the the honesty and the integrity of the people that found those tombs. Because I know throughout history, especially in these areas, they're con they're contending with tomb raiders and thieves just trying to excavate these areas for personal gain. But here is a group of archaeologists that found these tombs and they pretty much intact. Intact and have just given it to the public as a gift to visit could have easily been used for personal gain, but the integrity of, of these people that found them. I mean, I'm, I was just amazed by that. I mean, they could have been the, the artifacts that they have displayed. I, I don't even know if you can put a price. I mean, it, it has to be millions and millions of dollars. They have, worth. Yeah, they have to be. Cause there were, there was many, many gold, um, yeah, the artifacts were, there were so many of them and they were so unique and some of them were pure gold, right? Yeah. 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 That was, that, that was, uh, and, and, and that described that museum. It was almost like you, we were walking into a hill or something like they covered yeah. it. They, they, yeah. they covered it. They have constructed a dome, a dome structure that goes over these tombs that were several feet under the ground and you can walk and see the tombs, which are the tombs themselves are almost the size of a, of a large building. I mean, they're, they're not just little grave sites. I mean, these are huge tombs that you can walk up to and see the, the detail of the outside of the tombs. And, the, and these were completely uncovered by this group of archaeologists, which was just really fascinating to see. Mm. And the way that, of course, that they they buried, you know, they they buried these people with with riches and gold to honor their life. And so, you know, you, you just I just walked away grateful that uh, they ended up in the right hands. And now people from all over, over the world can come and peace that you really get a, a, a glimpse into the history and the culture of that time. Yeah. And then we went on from there to Berea. Yeah, Berea. Which is interesting because it, it contrasting, you know, the Bible, um, I think it's Acts chapter 17, when he goes to Berea in verse 10, um, it, it talks about how the Bereans were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica, Thessalonica um, because they listened to Paul and then they, they actually checked to make sure what he said was true, which... Uh, it, it, which was which is pretty interesting to think about. 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. So the the uh, he kind of got kicked out of Thessalonica, um, and then you know makes his way. And again, it's hard. It's hard to. Um, it's hard to. And until you experience it, it's hard to realize like how far these towns were not like close together. These he no. he he went tr- long distances, yeah, uh, to get to these places. Absolutely, and yeah, just <laughs> the time it must have. I mean, you don't really appreciate just the uh, the time it must have taken him just to get from these places. I mean, when we read about the missionary journeys, we read them in succession. He went from here to here to here. And you don't think about, well, from, from, the, from that dot to that dot. I mean, that was That's a, like three nights. Quite the voyage. Yeah. yeah. Three days walking or something like that, at least yeah, yeah, sometimes longer than that. And then in this, in the, in Acts 17, it actually talks about how some of the Jews in Thessal- Thessalonia were so upset with Paul that they actually followed him to Berea and uh, kind of chased him out of Berea as well. And that's how he ended up in Athens. That town of Berea was pretty cool, wasn't it? That was really neat to see. Berea. Berea or Berea. Okay. So that's um, where the, the tall, what we kept referring to as the tall Paul statue. Tall Paul, yes. That was where <laughs> tall Paul was. Um, and they had the uh, yeah that statue. Some country, some country made it made a statue of the Apostle Paul, and they made him like eight feet tall and really <laughs> skinny, looking like an alien sort of. There were several depictions of Paul that were that were weren't very uh, that weren't often extremely befitting. It was kind of yeah. <laughs> but there was also along with the the statue that the mosaic that was right there was really neat. And um, they 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 claim that some of the stones there were the actual stones that um, he uh, stood on to to preach. And that yeah. was a that was a really neat town there to see some of the uh, Greek Orthodox churches that are still there was really cool. And um, I, I really I was really touched by the the and I know you spent a lot of time talking to them too that the the shop that was right across the street. Yeah. You know, sometimes you go to these places and, and, you know, I had an I went to Israel in 2007. And, you know, sometimes you you come to these places and you you feel like you're in a bit of a tourist trap. You know, you, you the shop owners come out and they, they try to they try to wheel and deal a little bit, try to hustle. And, you know, you can appreciate that they're trying to make make some money. But um, but that shop owner across the street from this very revered site was just a really, really cool guy to talk to. He was very welcoming to our group and Being genuinely interested in, in genuinely our, interested, you know, was not just trying our, to sell us stuff. No. And his, his, his family, I believe his, his wife and then either it was his mom or his daughter was there. And so it was, it was very much a family oriented place. And, um, you know, he said, you're welcome anytime. If you're in the area, if you need to use our restroom, if there's anything we can do to help you while you're here. I mean, it was just very genuine and just really. Yeah, he was great. He yeah. Yeah. I know you bought, I bought a, a little picture of Paul for my office. I believe you bought. Yeah, it I got it hanging. I got it hanging up on, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I mean, that's what I just, I love that about traveling abroad is just meeting people that are living and working there and just getting a sense for the, the culture. And, um, you know, it's not always, uh, it's not always a pleasant experience. And, and when it is, it's like, wow. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the hotels. We stayed in four hotels. Yeah. How about that? They were pretty good, right? The those were, were those were cool hotels. Those were cool. Two of the hotels. two of the four hotels had pools on the top roof. We got yep. into one of them. We probably should have got into the second one. Um, well, that first night, I know at the first hotel where we stayed, we all wanted to stay up. We didn't want we to jet fall lag. asleep. Yeah, because we knew if we fell asleep, it was going to be over, and our and our body clock was going to be completely out of sync. So. A few of us did a cold plunge into the unheated pool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which helped. It really helped. It did. It woke us up, man. It woke us up. And it was, but it was so cool that the pool was on the top of the, the hotel because then you could see the whole city. The views were awesome up there. Yeah. A lot of cool pictures from up there and could really could see the 
the waterfront and all the houses and the architecture was really sweet. Yeah. And so most of the time we had like unlimited breakfast, unlimited dinners, and those are, those are really good. Tons and tons of food, tons of options. But what did you think about Greek food? A couple of times we ate. We Oh man, I absolutely loved it. I mean, I ate, we, we all ate really, really well. I mean, the lamb, the, the, the meats, the, what was it? Um, the, uh, the stew. Wild boar, wild boar stew. My goodness! I mean, who, all the all the meals that, I thought were, were. Who would have known that wild boar would taste so good? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They had they had a lot of um, a lot of choices, and 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 the food was just excellent. Yes. Um, gelato. If you have a sweet tooth, I mean, oh my gosh, gelato. There was that bakery we went to that had all the sweet rolls and. All of the, oh my gosh, the the breads and the, I mean, you could go, if you wanted to go to Greece on a culinary tour, you definitely could. It's, it's really impressive. I mean, I just, I loved the food. It was great. Yeah. I thought the tour was great. Our tour guide was amazing. Our driver was great. Um, yeah. Our tour guide was a seasoned um, tour guide. She's been oh, man. for many, many years. Um, and she was wonderful. She was, um, not tall Paul. She was a little, <laughs> a, a little on, on the, uh, shorter side, but, um, but she was, um, funny. She was funny. She was so patient with us because how many times during the tour would she answer a question and then somebody else would walk up and ask the exact same question <laughs> or, or yes. telling us about something. And then somebody would would ask, and yeah, like she was classic, very the classic. Crazy. The classic one is like when we were at some of these museums, these Greek museums. She'd be like, you know, "Now the Apostle Paul never was here." We're, you know, there's, you know, and then somebody would say, "Now was Paul here?" <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that happened many times. She was she was so patient. She was so she patient. was one of the classic things. Somebody was trying to Google something, and she's like, "You don't need Google. You got me." Yeah. <laughs> I think my favorite quote was somebody said they were apologizing and said, "Oh, I'm so stupid." She said, "No, you're not stupid. You're just not listening." <laughs> That's right. <laughs> And that's yeah, the, she was great. She, you know, it's she had the the right uh, personality for a tour guide, and she said she had thirty plus years experience, and and you could tell she was so knowledgeable and patient, and and uh, did an awesome job. Yeah, and you know, and we um, we got her laughing a couple times, you know, which yeah, was awesome. and, <laughs> um, yeah, that was cool. That was cool. So. I just love that. I felt like this this tour was so balanced because you had the biblical content, but then you also had just learning about Greece, Greek history. Mm -hmm. um, and then you just had experiencing modern Greece. Just we had pl plenty of time to to go to, you know, walk around the cities, eat from the cafes. Yeah, um, I thought it was really well balanced, didn't you? I did. I thought it was really well balanced and compared to other experiences, I thought it was uh, much more well balanced than uh, trips I've taken in the past. I mean, it's just it, it gave you room to breathe, which was just nice and to to really soak it in. And and I didn't feel like we and we packed in a lot. I mean, we were going, going, going the whole time, but um, we certainly uh, had those spaces of, of just being able to walk around and just have uh, a little downtime, which was appreciated. Yeah, it, it was cool. I want to go back. I don't know about you. I'd go back in a second. I want to go back. <laughs> I'm, go back. I'm, I'm ready. I go actually back. can't wait to go back. I I don't know how soon I'll get back there, but oh my gosh, it's definitely worth a, a second look. It was it was amazing. I'm hoping I get to go back. I would love to lead another group. And this was mentioned a little bit earlier, but the group size. I mean, we 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 ran into groups that were like 40, 50 people. But oh, I think gosh. we had such a unique experience 
and such a positive experience because our group size was smaller. And really, I mean, we were able to weave around a lot of the crowds and Rena, our guide, was really conscious about our group size and wanting to make sure that we positioned ourselves around because I, I mean, because there are hundreds of people visiting at the same time. And, you know, you can you can certainly see how you could get caught in, in long lines or, or long waits and how that would affect the trip. So, yeah, we were we were um, we were able to be a lot more nimble and kind of get get in and out um, quicker. And so it allowed us to spend more time at these places. <laughs> But then the other thing, and I think this might be even more important, you you start out as strangers, but then you become family because, you know, it's like 10 people. So we all, we all, you know, if you go in a group of like 40 to 50 people, you're not going to learn everybody's name, right? let alone know anything about their life. But if you go with a group of 10, it's like a family. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, we, you know, we, we ate every meal together. So we're sharing our lives with each other. Uh, we, and that allowed us to, you know, just bond really quickly. And I think that, yeah, that made the whole experience um, special. Um, it did. It did. I, I felt think like, could, I think you could go on a trip like this with 40 or 50 people and be like, oh yeah, that was a very nice tour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but for like you and I, like we, we really, we really made some cemented some good friendships with other people. Absolutely. I feel like I had a really good time with, with each person on the trip, you know, whether it was just walking around or, or chatting on the bus or eating a meal together. I feel, I feel like there, that I had uh, a really good amount of time to, to get to know everybody on the trip, which is which is rare. I mean, it's just, you just take like, and it wasn't that long of, I mean, it was one week, but after the week, I, I really felt like everybody was just that we, we made some really great genuine friendships and, and I would be very excited to, to travel with this group again. I, I hope that, that we can get together for, for future trips because it was just a great mix of people. Everybody gelled well. So, yeah, I, I agree. I would, uh, this is the second time I traveled with about half the group were people that went to Israel with me. And, uh, right. And so this is the second time I've traveled with them and I definitely hope we get to travel again. Um, yeah. Well, if you're still friends after two trips, that's, that's pretty big. That's saying a lot. That's, 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 that's uh, a lot. <laughs> so, hey, let's bring this to a close. So my final thought is I will never, ever read Acts chapter 16, 17 or 18 the same because of the experience we had. Those those three chapters of the Bible, which are Paul's second missionary journey, they all of a sudden they've come to life because I've been to the places um, I've, I've traveled, I've traveled his journey. So for me, that, that is just the coolest thing. I just love that. I, I love yeah. how the Bible just came alive. Yeah. Those places, when you read those places, which, you know, <laughs> the, the <laughs> you read the Bible and there's just so many places. And, and, and now when I come across those words, Philippi, Corinth, Thessalonica, it, it will always, the, the, the scenes and the architecture and the views and the places will just pop into my mind. And it just, it really does bring a whole new depth that wasn't there before, which is really one of the greatest gifts, one of the, one of many gifts of the trip, but certainly, certainly one that, I mean, I won't be able to read for the rest of my life without thinking of this trip. So that's just a real, real, real gift. Amen. Thanks for listening to this episode of the gospel addict podcast. Feel free to contact us via email at gospeladdictpodcast at gmail.com. Stay tuned for our next episode. And remember, on your worst days, you're never beyond the reach of God's grace. And on your best days, you're never beyond the need of God's grace. See you next time.